Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So this video today is actually a kind of follow-up video from the explainer video that I did about the Migration Policy Index or MIPEX for short. Be sure that you actually first check out that video to understand the project and how the scores are generated. So just a quick recap. So MIPEX has been an ongoing project since 2004 and currently presents data on the extent to which national migrant integration policies in 52 countries uphold the EU and UN's principles of equality. The 52 countries that are covered in MIPEX are all of the EU countries as well as all of the OECD member states. So MIPEX scores highlight policy areas where standards of equality are either met or not met, and they're standardized so that you can have comparisons between different countries. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how MIPEX scores can be used in academic research to determine links between integration policies and uh, migrant integration outcomes. So we'll discuss some of the key findings from previous research and maybe some avenues also for future research. Now, this video is a follow-up from a presentation that was actually done online by Thomas Huddleston and Giacomo Solano, who both work at the Migration Policy Group. And they gave a talk looking at exploring the links between MIPEX and migrant integration outcomes, lessons learned, and new avenues for research. So basically, this is a kind of summary of what they found. If you're interested, though, to know more about the actual talk that they give, I'll make sure to link that in the description below. So now let's jump right into the main content of this video. So first, let's look at a summary of the most recent MIPEX overall country scores, plus their changes since 2014. And the most current scores are from, from 2020. So again, remember that higher scores indi indicate migration policies that align with standards for equality in the EU or UN conventions covered in the previous explainer video. So among the top 10 highest scoring countries or best scoring countries are six EU or EEA countries. They are Sweden, Finland, Portugal, Belgium, Norway, and Ireland, as well as two North American countries, Canada and the United States, as well as New Zealand and Australia. So they round out our top 10 kind of overall better scores. Now among the bottom 10 are seven ex-Soviet states. So Bulgaria, Poland, Croatia, Slovakia, Latvia, Lithuania, and the Russian Federation, as well as three Asian countries, China, Indonesia, and India. Now let's look at how MIPEX scores have been used to determine the impact of policies on migrant outcomes. So recently, the Migration Policy Group used country scores as part of a study interrogating uh, the work that had previously been done by Matthias Zeika and Heinde Haas in their 2013 paper that looks at a conceptual framework for migration policy effects and effectiveness. The model that I'm going to show here is uh, um, an original and simplified form that illustrates a path from um, the discourse to policies on paper, and then to policy implementation, and finally to policy outcomes. So this model kind of identifies three gaps in uh, um, policy implementation effectively, um, or in policy and their outcomes. So let's look at each of these three gaps in turn. So the first gap is what's called a discursive gap. And what that means is basically that if public discourse doesn't match policies on paper, then implementation is going to be difficult. The second gap is an implementation gap. So that's factors like authorities' discretion, resources, interests, and constraints that can keep policies from being effectively implemented basically on the ground. And finally, there's also an efficacy gap. And here we see that policies might be fully implemented, but those policies may not be important factors that determine integration outcomes. So it may be the case that other factors are more important than policy when it comes to certain outcomes, such as language or labor market or, or other things. So migration policy group researchers have used 
MIPEX data to see if these gaps are indeed apparent in the countries that are currently scored in the MIPEX index. So now let's look at each of these gaps in turn and see what evidence is there for these gaps or, or or evidence that does not show these gaps. So first, is there a discursive gap? And remember, discursive gaps have to do with if public discourse doesn't match policies on paper, then implementation will be difficult. Here, of course, then we're looking at the, the outcome side of things. So multiple studies already use MIPEX to investigate this question. So in general, the results show that um, policies are more often in harmony actually with public opinion. So these two things actually seem to go together. The data that is used for this is really looking at how um, the kind of the MIPEX overall score um, affects my, the migrant's acceptance or in how, how far these things go together. Both public opinion and policies are slow to change and are strongly influenced by political culture and trust. So large policy overhauls are not possible without public support. We can either look at a virtuous or a vicious cycle between public opinion and policy and that's affected by variables like pro or anti-immigrant attitudes, xenophobia, Islamophobia, trust, and also interaction with migrants. So based on MIPEX data and Gallup polling, so that's some other data, there is more of a linkage than a gap between public opinion and policy. Now let's turn to whether or not there is an efficacy gap. So again, remember this is having to do with policies might be fully implemented, but those policies may not actually be important factors that determine integration outcomes. So this question is also well-researched in existing papers. The, the results here really depend on the policy and for whom. Determining the presence of an efficacy gap also depends on the country's benchmarks for success of policy implementation. Integration or migration policies can be a major factor influencing attitudes of both migrants and the public, but not necessarily influencing outcomes. So in general, inclusive policies are often one or one of the major factors influencing the attitudes and participation of immigrants and the public over time. Here we can look at characteristics of inclusion integration policies and what we actually see them doing in practice, or at least as to what has been researched. So we can first see that if migrants have a secure future, for instance, by um, possibilities for easy naturalization, family reunification, and settlement, that this is usually um, a catalyst for change in attitudes um, as basically also a two-way process affecting both migrants and non-migrants. So we also see that open opportunity structures and closing gaps, for instance, in health and political participation are also quite important, as well as improving employment and education quality. So this is looking at um, progress in skill development and resilience rather than levels of uh, um, education, for example. So we're not looking necessarily at higher levels of degrees, but really that quality of education. So there are some important distinctions here. So inclusive policies do not necessarily improve rates, meaning rates of unemployment or literacy rates. Instead, they speed up a process of socioeconomic integration via capacity building. So things like language acquisition and skill development. There are definitely some possibilities for future research. So when we look at implementation gaps, there's actually less research in this regard. So currently MIPEX data has not been commonly used to research the presence or nature of implementation gaps when it comes to migration or integration policy. And there are definitely some relevant factors that need to be considered here, like information, documentation, discretion, in, um, bureaucracy and review, resources, timing of interventions, professionalization in the sector in question, representation and delivery in the sector, and roles for volunteers and communities. I want to leave you with a few concluding remarks directly from the MIPEX 2020 report um, and some things that um, were 
were brought to the forefront as to being important. So one is inclusive policies can create a virtuous cycle of integration that repo- that promotes openness and interaction. Immigrants and the public are more likely to interact with and think of each other as equals in countries where inclusive policies treat immigrants as equals and invest in integration as an opportunity for society as a whole. Also, inclusive policies not only increase positive attitudes and interactions between the public and immigrants, but also create an overall sense of belonging, well-being, and trust. Under inclusive policies, the public feels less fear of immigrants, while immigrants also enjoy greater opportunities to learn and contribute. As a result, immigrants and non-immigrants have more regular and positive interactions with each other. They They also more frequently develop positive attitudes about their identity, their health, their satisfaction with life, their trust in society, and their participation in politics. So I hope this video just gave you a quick understanding of how immigrant and integration policies that are considered to be more positive can be very helpful with regard to integration outcomes. So if you like this video, please make sure to like the video, subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week. If you also have more research that can that can contribute to this discussion, please make sure to comment down below because we want to be an avenue to help people have informed discussions on migration and integration issues. I do hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.